So today I'll talk about how the art of storytelling possesses the remarkable ability to raise our empathy toward the urgent battle against climate change and man-made environmental catastrophes. When I say stories that can instill our empathy, I'm referring to narratives uh, that are humanized by the representation of characters, be it through fiction, non-fiction, then um, narrative poetry, uh, any narrative reporting, um, all of these different forms, or more precisely, the tales of climate change and environmental disasters. Let me start by talking about the novel Animals People, written by Indra Sinha, which is set against the backdrop of Bhopal gas tragedy of 1984 in India. It was one of the world's, world's worst industrial disasters, which killed thousands of people and continued to affect many more with lifelong health issues. The story is narrated by Animal, a 19-year-old boy who lost both of his parents on the night of the disaster. The toxicity released by the disaster has left him physically deformed, as you can see in this AI-generated image, and causing his back twisted it and he went through extreme pain through a period of time as he was changing, metamorphosed, uh, that at one point he had to start walking on all fours. This earned him the name Janwar, which means animal in English. He also suffers from health problems, his lungs are damaged, he uh, has developed chronic breathing difficulties and pain. He carries deep psychological scars as well, leading to his isolation from the society. And he has also grown resentment toward most people. He becomes a scavenger, living mostly on streets, eating from garbage dumps, and also sometimes sleeping on industrial waste sites. He forms a few friendships with a very few people who care for him. But in the end, he is ready to live with the truth that he is never going to be accepted like others by the society or compensated for his loss. So, as I was telling you the story of Animal, have you started to care about him? If yes, why do you care about a boy who is fictional and is also from a different place? For a moment, let's think about the figures and facts of the Bhopal gas leak. The immediate death toll between 2,000 and 3,000 people, tens of thousands of people suffering injuries and health complications because of the direct exposure to the toxic gas, and generations of people uh, affected by the lingering toxicity in the environment. We are certainly shocked by the information, but we are not actually going to remember them for long. Think about uh, Chernobyl nuclear disaster of 1986, Fukushima nuclear disaster of 2011, raising, rising global temperature, sea level, irregular weather patterns, etc., etc. How much do you think about the victims of these? It is likely that you will be affected more by animal story than by reports on calamities. So we can see a potential distinction in our level of empathy when we uh, encounter data and facts compared to human stories. Stories portray human suffering and they also connect with us on a personal level. General reports can give you the scale or intensity of a disaster, but they do not often resonate with us emotionally. And then there are traditional means of generating um, support for disasters, uh, such as campaigns and demonstrations. However, they are not as effective as stories in case of generating our empathy because we do not get to see the victims or listen to them directly, which makes genres like storytelling an effective and a very valuable tool. For example, in that novel in Animals, People, Animal serves as the narrator and the author claims to have changed nothing other than translating the story from Hindi to English. Of course, it is fictional, but he makes a very important point of this need that we listen to the victims very directly. A few things happen when we read a story of the length of a fiction. Reading is an engaging task, so we already start to participate in the story of the text 
a lot more actively than watching a piece of news on TV. Consciously or unconsciously, we are pulled into the world of the characters. So when one or more of the characters face tragic consequences, we feel affected by that. If I may borrow from Aristotle, uh, we feel emotional experience. When one or some of the characters have problems, we feel pity for them. And when we are about to face some sort of a, a tragic consequence or a tragic ending, we feel fear for them. And by going through these emotions, according to Aristotle, we purify or cleanse our emotions. We release our own sadness and fears by feeling them for the characters in the story. This purification of emotions can potentially lead us to be more empathetic because isn't empathy our ability to uh, put ourselves in someone else's shoes? To truly grasp what other people might be experiencing in a situation when they face these sort of troubles. When we care deeply, we feel responsibility and we feel connected and we even feel personally affected. There are many survey-based studies out there that have shown that fictional narratives can have a positive impact on our attitudes toward the wildlife. Um, also, I've witnessed examples of change firsthand in my world literature class. Um, one of my students uh, pretty you know, explicitly said that reading Animals People, which was one of the texts that they read, um, would bring him back to the habit of reading fiction. He had developed the impression that reading non-fiction in essays would be a better utilization of his time, but now he thought that reading a novel like Animals Fiction can be both educational as well as um, an intellect, I mean, as well as entertaining, okay, both at the same time. Uh, he said that reading the novel had compelled him to take time to listen to animal and understand the depth of his observations. Fictional narratives mirror events from real life, and they often expose the other versions of narratives that try to hide or misrepresent the tales of communities affected by climate change and environmental disasters. And fictional narratives can be antithetical to those agenda-based narratives. We live in an age of conflicting narratives around us, and writers like novelists can provide us with the closest to real stories that the actual victims would like to share with us. Let me extend the idea of agenda-based narratives by referring to this book called Storytelling, Bewitching the Modern Mind, uh, written by the French thinker Christian Salmon. And that's a quote from the book where he said that the powerful capitalist and imperialist entities tax, uh, they, have, they have a nexus and they tax artificial narratives onto reality. Many capitalist corporations thrive on industrial projects that often cause disasters and harm our environment. But these entities then circulate, they ma first manufacture and they circulate their own stories to avoid blame. They own and control the global media outlets, including the newspaper networks, magazines, online platforms, by shaping the narratives and content that they want their audience to consume they promote certain worldviews and truths that align with their interests. Um, in Animals People, uh, the powerful corporation tries to manipulate uh, the system to evade justice for their environmental crimes. They use their legal resources, their monetary powers, to make people believe that they were not mainly responsible for the disaster. It was the local operators. So they have created their own versions of narratives about the disaster. Such fabricated narratives that are prevalent around us today can actually shape our emotions, our beliefs, and our ideas. And in effect, and in the long run, it can even develop our indifference to environmental disasters and climate change. However, fictional stories, which are by definition not real, can still replicate the truth for us and offer potential counter-narratives to fabricated narratives. They can provide us with an educational, emotional experience and emotional experience to make us understand the extent and the seriousness of the global climate crisis. 
so that we can understand that even distant events can touch us personally. Nothing is disconnected for us. We all are connected in this uh, disaster and the global emergency. So sometimes the idea of a global emergency, which is you know all over the world and one problem, can be too much for us to digest. But fictional narratives can make this information digestible for us in the sense that it is broken down and presented to us in the form of one particular story, which we can relate to and understand. This can also empower us to a certain extent to act. Of course, reading a novel cannot change much and victims do not actually need our pity. They do not seek our pity. They want justice. But what alone can change a lot? We need to overhaul the entire system. And we need more and more writers to incorporate climate change themes into their work. And we need our publishing industry to come up with more environmentally responsible practices. Because climate change requires collective response from all of us, from all quarters. And we all need to be the agents of change and consume and act with greater responsibility. Like Mahatma Gandhi said, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. Thank you.